All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I am gonna go and do a quick demo of why Google Chips gives you false results, which will really give you a huge bounce rate when it comes to your cold email. So a lot of people think that with people chips, you can actually validate your catch-all emails, but the only true way to validate catch-all emails is actually sending a physical email to the catch-all address and seeing if it bounces back. So let's back up a little bit. I have a pretty good video on this. So I think at the very first video of my channel, but let's talk about email validation, right? So what is email validation? It's basically just verifying if an email address is still there and most tools out on the market do SMTP validation so they're literally doing a SMTP check to see if the address is valid or not but what happens is there's some domains that are configured to be a catch-all so what a catch-all is is that you can send an email to anything on that actual domain so let's say sales support Alice and regardless if these actual inboxes are there or not they will go through and land in a kind of like a sync inbox right and sometimes this can cause your email to also bounce if the inbox is not there okay and so what we've noticed is that anywhere from 40 percent of catch-alls will actually bounce and so we built scrubby scrubby.io it's the only verification platform on the market that can actually validate your catch-all emails properly we have a huge network of gmail seed accounts and what we're doing is quite literally sending a blank email to your catch-all addresses that you upload and see if it bounces or not and a lot a lot of people will say they could do catch-all validation, but they're just kind of doing things like Google people chips or just some random metrics and guesses that really aren't accurate. This is strictly the only way to validate catch-all emails. And you know, I get this question a lot. People always ask me, Nick, why does Scrubby take 48 hours, 72 hours to get the results back? And it's strictly because some bounces from what we've seen, and this is roughly anywhere from 20 to 30% of your list, will actually only report a bounce back after 48 hours. And so that's why we will send all your emails within probably 15 to 20 minutes and then we will wait to see if we actually get a bounce back and then give you the proper results and we do this so that you can get the most accurate data and so what i did was i opened up scrubby and let me do that really quickly okay so i got into scrubby and what i did was i basically just took a whole bunch of different lists that i've uploaded and i downloaded the invalid so i just came in here and download invalid so these are lists that i've actually uploaded to scrubby and scrubby has already given me the results back and what i'm strictly doing is taking the invalids because i'm gonna see how many many of those actually come back as valid when I put them through Google people chips. So this is one thing we realized because this is actually funny enough, our V1 version of Scrubby actually used to incorporate Google people chips. And I noticed from my internal campaigns that I run across our agency at Leadbird, and just to kind of give you measures, we sent over a million emails a month. I noticed that our bounce rate was starting to trickle up. And so I kind of looked a little bit further, noticed it came from a lot of the valid emails that were coming from the catch-alls. And once I kind of looked at it, I realized it was because of Google people chips. And so let's kind of look at the results real quickly. So I have all invalid catch-all email addresses on the left and I'm copying them over to the right. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click insert smart chips, convert to people chips. And you'll see a lot of them are starting to pop up as valid, right? People think that if the little text box is made around these addresses that these emails are valid, but in reality, these none of these emails are valid, right? And so now let's figure out what percentage this actually is. So I'm gonna do a simple formula. I'm gonna put equals not A2 equals B2. And I'm basically looking for all the trues because this is the false positives, right? So I'm just going, and so to kind of look at it, I have on this list about, about a thousand emails on here. And then if I click false, or if I just filter it to be the trues, let's see how many people chip validations there are. There's 169 out of the 963. And so that's a pretty big percentage. So that right there is 17% of this list. So if I ran this email, if like let's say, you know, I ran people chips and I and I sent an email to all these valids that I think are actually valid. These will all bounce. And that's that's actually crazy to kind of see. I mean, it's actually the first time I'm actually seeing it as well, like in a test like this. But this is 17% out of the 963 emails that I had in here that came back as valid through Google people chips. When in reality, I've already sent an email to them through Scrubby and know that they are invalid. So these are false positives, 17%. That is a huge margin. And if you're wanting to make sure that you have great deliverability, then you know that you can't use this list and it's a very dirty list. So that's why Google people chips is false. You should not use this. 
in your cold email campaigns, you need to use something like Scrubby. Like I said before, with Scrubby, we're actually sending a physical email, or I guess it's a digital email, virtual email, to your recipient, and we're waiting to see if it bounces back or not. And so that's how we're able to validate catch-all emails. Do not use people chips because you will run into a high bounce rate.